Apache Beam is a popular parallel computing framework with a vibrant community, and for good reason. It proposes some great benefits over similar frameworks. I'm going to give you an overview of Apache Beam, and by the end of the video, you will hopefully have the skills that you need to write a simple pipeline. Apache Beam is an open source SDK of the Dataflow model. In order to understand Apache Beam, first we need to understand the Dataflow model. The Dataflow model was first described in a scientific paper by Google in 2015. It describes the processing model of Google Cloud Dataflow, which is a service available on Google Cloud. It is largely based on two other processing frameworks developed by Google, Flume Java, a batch engine, and Millwheel, a streaming engine. These two frameworks were heavily used by Google, but lacked functionalities as new modern challenges appeared. So far, all parallel processing frameworks try to optimize along the dimensions of correctness, latency, and cost. For example, to make sure that data is complete, you will probably wait a bit more before starting processing to make sure you have all late data arrived. That causes latency. Or you might decide to start the processing early to minimize latency, however that might result in incomplete data and increased costs. They say that the problem with all these parallel computing frameworks so far is that they expect input data to become complete at some point in time. As a solution, they propose a unified model that incorporates the fact that we might never know if or when we have seen all of our data. It is unified because it doesn't differentiate between unbounded and bounded datasets or streaming and batch processing. The data flow model is infrastructure agnostic, which means that it is able to run on different execution engines, making the choice of execution engine just a practical decision. Putting it all together, Apache Beam is the name of a set of open source SDKs that we developers use to interact with the Dataflow model. The Dataflow model is a unified parallel processing concept that enables execution engine agnostic processing. In the future, you will be able to code an Apache Beam pipeline in any language and run it on any execution engine. As of today, the supported languages are Java, Python, Go, and Scala, while the supported runners are Google Cloud Dataflow, Apache Flink, Apache Spark, Apache Hadoop MapReduce, JSTORM, IBM Streams, and many more. Apache Beam's functionalities are not a union of its runners' functionalities. Apache Beam tries to incorporate the best of all runners. All right, we have a high-level idea about Apache Beam. Let's dive into the Dataflow model. The Dataflow model proposes innovative ideas in two areas, windowing and triggering. What is a window anyway? In streaming data processing, in order to aggregate data, you need to group them in finite chunks. You cannot aggregate over an infinite dataset. Windowing is always time-based, which means that we group data points based on when they happened or when we observed them in the system. When dealing with web analytics data, we consume events in a streaming pipeline. An event has a key, which is the user ID. It also has a timestamp, which is when the event happened. Let's say that we get an event every time a user clicks on something. How could we window these data points? Simplest would be to create so-called fixed windows. Fixed windows have a static window size, like an hour and they are applied across all user IDs. Using this type of windowing, we could tell how many times users clicked in every hour by summing up the clicks across all users in a window. We could create sliding windows. Similarly to fixed windows, sliding windows have a static window size, but they also have a slide period, so they may overlap. For example, we could create an hourly window starting every minute. Using this type of windowing, we could tell how many times users clicked in every hour, similarly to fixed windows, but instead of waiting for the window to finish, we recalculate the results every minute. 
Lastly, we could also organize data points per key and capture some period of activity in that subgroup. These are called session windows. They are typically defined by a timeout gap. In our web analytics example, this is very relevant. It allows us to group events by user ID. Let's say a user arrives at our website, clicks a few times, and then leaves. Session windows make it possible to group these events into a so-called session. Session windows are unaligned, meaning that they are not applied across all keys. These are the common window patterns. Apache Beam's main contribution is support for unaligned windows. The idea of windows is central to the data flow model. You can think of Apache Beam as a streaming system that is able to handle batch processing as a special case of streaming. When processing bounded datasets, it assigns every event to a single global window. The data flow model makes a clear distinction between event time and processing time. Event time is when the event itself actually happened, so when a user clicked at our website. While processing time is when the event arrives to our system for processing. Why is this important? Well, because it causes late data that we need to account for. In an ideal world, we would always be processing events immediately as they happen. The data flow model offers triggers to handle late data. Triggers in Apache Beam allow developers to specify when to emit the output results for a given window. Triggers work well with windowing. Essentially, windowing determines where in event time data are grouped together, and triggering determines where in processing time the results are emitted. The Dataflow SDK has two core transforms that operate on key value pairs, pardo and group by key. Pardo is for general parallel processing, like filtering and map-like operations. It expects user-defined logic in the form of a function called dofn. Pardo is an element-wise operation that doesn't require any grouping. It can be naturally applied to unbounded data. But what if we would like to aggregate data? Group by key, as the name suggests, is for grouping elements by key. It collects all data for a given key in a window. All right, we learned a lot so far. Let's write our first pipeline. We will use Apache Beam's Python SDK. Let's stick with our web analytics use case. If you remember, each event has an event time, a user ID, and a click count, which is always one because it represents a single click. We would like to know how many times each user clicks when coming to our website. This can be translated into session-based windowing. We will group the events into sessions and sum the clicks in each session. Let's imagine the following scenario. Four events arrive to our system from two users, with user IDs ND and Sam. Events received from ND happened at 13.02, 1320 and 1357, while we got a single event from Sam, which happened at 1314. We agree that if a user is inactive for at least 30 minutes, then we close a session. A session starts at 1302 for ND when the first event happens. Another session starts for Sam when the second event happens at 1314. A third event arrives from ND at 1320, which we can assign to session 1. At 13.44, we hit the 30-minute threshold for session 2, so we closed that session for Sam. At 13.50, we hit the 30-minute threshold for session 1, so we closed that session as well. At 13.57, a new event was created by Andy, which we cannot assign to the first session, so we started a new session for him. No events came in, so we closed this session after 30 minutes. Based on this, we expect the following output. We expect three sessions, two for Andy and one for Sam. 
All right, we know what to do in theory. Let's code the pipeline. First, let's import some dependencies and create a pipeline. A pipeline encapsulates every operation. I created a dummy dataset with four events and three fields, user ID, click, and timestamp. The timestamp is in Unix format. This pipeline is technically a batch pipeline, but we could apply the exact same operations if we read from a streaming source. In the first operation, we need to assign the timestamp to the metadata of each element such that window functions can access and use them later. In order to do so, we create a user-defined function called doFn. This function can be applied parallel to each element. We transform each element into a tuple and assign the timestamp as metadata. The reason we create tuples is that later on we would like to group elements by user ID and we would like to use the first element of each tuple as key. We feed the created doFn to a pardo, which will run the function on each element. We are ready to window the data. We create session windows with a 30 minute gap size. Now we can group events in each window based on user ID and sum the clicks. As a last step, let's write the results into a file. Beam has a unified I.O. interface for all runners, which means that you can read and write local text files the same way you would read and write storage objects in S3 or Google Cloud Storage. All right, our pipeline is finished. If you run the pipeline, we get a text file as output. We got what we expected, two sessions for Andy and one session for Sam. We talked about many things, the data flow model, windowing, and triggers. Hope I helped you understand Apache Beam a bit more, and you are now ready to write your own pipelines. You can find the code that I showed in the video on GitHub. The link is on the screen now and in the video description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.